It's like the difference between being a thermometer and a thermostat. A thermometer is going to walk into the room and test the the temperature and it's going to say, mm. yeah, this is the temperature. And it's just going to join it. It's just going to mirror exactly what's already happening. Right. But a thermostat is someone who walks in the room and brings the tone that they want to experience. They, they, they start the ripple effect. They, they ignite the fire uh, of the vibrational match. And so bring the joy. You don't get what you want. You get what you're being. You can't have what you're not generating initially and so i i feel like this um responsibility is such a beautiful one and it's so simple to carry this piece with you all the time you know to actually set the tone of the vibe that you wish to experience knowing that it is your responsibility ultimately the answer is you this is wake the f up podcast f is for fabulous i'm andy dooley and i'm kat Tours. wake the f up is all about celebrating the great drama of life the beauty and the brutality and tapping into your true divinity your creativity because you are the universe pretending to be human it's fabulous no the whole idea is to get free right Hey, hey, we are back with another episode of Wake the F Up. Woo! How you doing, Kat? I'm so good. I'm so enjoying waking my inner fabulous up. It's um, something that I like to focus on daily. And so, yeah, it's a pleasure to be here to jam with you again, Dooley. Yeah, this is going to be a great call. A call, Zoom, a podcast, the things. (laughs) Man's been on a call. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Today, we're going to talk about discovering and understanding and knowing that you are the answer. Oh, you know, for some people, it could sound like a giant anticlimax, like, (laughs) dun dun, (laughs) you are the answer. What's the answer? It's you. Uh, No, I wanted the answer to be something else. Kind of, it's a, it's a shocking thing when you realize, oh, wait a minute, I'm the answer because we spend so much of our life looking out there for the answers, for the right answer, for how to be successful, happy, how to be loved, how to mold ourselves into society's, you know, conditioning. And then you kind of come to this realization, usually through pain, trial, error, heartbreak, where you realize, realize, wow, I have to take full responsibility for my life and I am the answer. Yes, and it's sort of like all of those paths lead you back to you. And uh, what a beautiful design, though, you know. it's um, It goes to show you that the answer can come in so many different um, sort of symbolic languages and, and answers. But really, if you look under the hood, the ball is um, returning to your court live in the present moment, and you are the answer. So what you got to do about it? Yeah, uh- you got to step into it. You got to become the deliberate creator of your life and, you know, stop, you know, blaming situations, other people, and really step into, okay, I have to take full responsibility for how I feel, for the meaning I'm giving this. And then I can be the solution. I can be the light. The yes. path will be shown to me. And that's, you know, why contrast serves us so well. Problems and challenges and difficult people reflect back to us and then we get to change our reaction and the meaning we're giving the situation and then we we find the answer right and i I feel like the first step to truly um being able to embody any of this sort of concept of that you are the answer is that we have to step into a deep radical acceptance that this is the game design that the fabric and the tapestry of the cosmic divine design which is that you create your reality is that you are in fact in the driver's seat that you are in fact um the generator of energies and vibration and states of being which in turn are flavoring and influencing the creation of reality and so by accepting that game design instead of just wondering about whether that's true 
you know, I think a lot of um, yeah. the seeking path takes us on this sort of, and it's beautiful, right? That poetic, mystical, the questions of, well, what is that? What is that? And But at some point, as you keep rendezvousing with the something that's pointing to the answer being you, the the next step, like the upgrade then, has to have something to do with fully accepting that game design and now ready to learn the rules and sharpen your tools. Sharpening the tools is such a, like getting that concept, just really getting that because, you know, that you really do create your reality and that it's all a reflective mirror and everybody is you, everything's a reflection, everything is here designed to help you grow, expand, become more. And I think that is it's what's happening now with the Great Awakening on planet Earth. And I think it's really still a tough pill to swallow for a lot of the spiritual people to really believe that they're creating their reality 100%. Right. And, you know, I, I believe what indicates that we don't truly believe it on a cellular level is that if you're really, 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 really knew that you're creating your reality, wouldn't you have like a, a hardcore quality control department on what you think and feel? Like you would just have like number you one would. thing would be that the now is in practice or the conscious deliberate creation practice, the, the vibration activation is actually the number one thing to focus on in this life because everything else pulls from that space. Everything's generated from that center. Right. It is. It is. So I want to encourage the listener right now to, you know, ask yourself, do I really believe that I'm the answer? Do I really believe that I'm creating all of it? And what, you know, you've got, in a sense, nothing to lose and everything to gain. And you, the gain is from saying, all right, from this moment forward, today's the day I am claiming that I am the creator. And it is all, it's all a reflection of, a reflection of me and the energy that I'm putting out. Right. And I have to have that high quality control of my thoughts, my emotions. Yes. I have I have to give things a meaning that empowers me instead of takes away my power. Right. And then from this space, as we accept that this is the driver's seat, that this is the um this is the responsibility of being free will in time and space, then now I can really establish a better relationship with contrast, knowing that it is designed for choice, it's designed for variety of story, and now I get to play. Now I can learn how to sharpen the tools that help me surf waves of contrast instead of just getting swept up by the latest worst case scenario weather report that's telling me fear, doubt, lack, loss, limitation, fear, there's not enough, but, you know, like I can actually yeah. establish like a better relationship with my um, contrast surfboard. I think that this is a fun piece of the practice, you know, learning how to play. Yeah. And, and lightening up on everything, you know, because we so as humans, we so want to solve the problems and heal the world and fix all the wrongdoings and shake our fist and point our finger. Right. And the most of it is completely out of our control. Out, it's out of my control. The government is out of my control. I can't control no. government. I can't control the traffic. I can't control people that are rude. Uh, but I can, can you know, like, and we know this, the only thing we can control is us. And we've really got to make that paramount. Yes. That's where you become the answer. It's like, no, I can control my reaction. Yeah. I can find a positive meaning in this. I can think thoughts that do feel better. And that's where my power is. That's right. And then all of the things that are popping up in reality that feel like challenge, that feel like conflict, that feel sort of dark in any way, become these sort of opportunities to, to grow and to develop and to unfold mm -hmm. they, they become like game pieces where i get to master myself here in the present moment due to this very challenging situation i will not trash my vibe because there's something in my field that feels you know that i don't agree with but rather i'm going to let that contrast create my clarity it's going to i'm going to celebrate our differences i'm going to extract the evolutionary gifts from all of these resistant pieces and then and now Oh, I'm I'm a masterful participant in the game of life. Yeah, being a full blown participant, yeah. and like I know now, like in the past 
couple, three weeks, you know, I've been working on new content, creating a course, creating a lead magnet, growing my email list, growing my business. And at times I've caught myself trying too hard, uh, working on something that's really not relevant to what I'm creating now. So I've been distracted and have to come back. And then I yeah. working on a piece and I'm like, where is this going to go? What is this going to do? I'm not even sure where this fits. Why am I working on this? Uh-huh. And and making it more difficult than it needs to be. Right. And I'm catching myself and going, wait, wh- why am I making this harder than it needs to be? Why am I trying too hard? Why am I letting this upset me? Yeah. And then I have to let go. I'm learning. I'm the answer. There's an easy path. There's an easy way to do this. Mm. It's coming together. Look at this. Look at that. And then, you know, pulling, I have to step back and get that fresh perspective again. Mm. And it's like, oh, this goes here and that goes here. And oh, this is really good. Mm. And it's like, oh, okay. Progress, progress, milking it, molding it, playing with it. Like that's, that's what I've been doing. Yeah. It's, it's interesting. I think that a lot of the time we, we like the feeling of solving problems. We like the feeling of things coming together because it it, it makes us feel like, uh, you know, we've achieved something. Something's working out for us. So, you know, as I, oh, this is for the, our listeners, like to, to um, capture that packet of energy, like, like what Andy was just sharing there when he sort of lets go and then suddenly things are falling into place. He can, he can put the pieces together. He's starting to have this clarity. That energy is the energy of a happy where I am eager for more to quote Abraham yeah. Hicks, you know, like to, to be really in this sweet space of surfing the waves. I love that space yeah. so much. And I think that that packet of energy is something really worth um, exploring. Oh, it is. And right now I want to uh, encourage the listener to to step back and can you apply that? We've been working on that a little bit in the Manifestors Cafe where I'm satisfied with what is. Mm-hmm. I'm okay with what is. I'm content with what is, but I'm excited for more. Yeah. And it really is. They've, Abraham has said it so many times that it is like the perfect vibrational place. And some people have a challenge with satisfied. I don't want to be satisfied. I want to be passionate or joyful or wealthy, dirty, rich, you know, yeah. and it's like, no, satisfied is really satisfied. You're not giving up, but you're, it's enough. Mm. And that's what I, I have in the past few days got to a new place, kind of a, a few breakthroughs, especially yesterday where I really felt satisfied mm. with all the stuff I've been working on, realizing I have a lot of great new content that I'm really excited about getting out there and sharing and making videos and talking about more, even on the podcast where I am satisfied. I've been doing great. It's enough. And I'm excited to see how this is received. I'm excited to teach this stuff. And it really is. So for the listener, can you be right now satisfied with where you are in your life and eager for more? Cause that's the sweet spot. Yeah, you know, in the game of nowism, we have this little assignment where we take ourselves daily to the satisfactory. And this is a place where you actually produce your satisfaction. You look for things that are satisfying. You look for things that are working. You go on a, on a literal hunt to generate this, this feeling of satisfaction. And then once you get into, um, like, you become a well-oiled machine. When your factory is rocking it, and all of the pieces are flowing together in perfect harmony, you have you have become a machine for satisfaction. And as we know with the law of attraction, that you don't get what you want, you ultimately get what you're being. Being satisfied means that the great yeah. law of life is going to start to give you more things, people, places, spaces, circumstances, conditions that will feel satisfying because that's what you're putting out. Yeah, I've got a great story this past weekend Uh, created like a magic moment. I shifted into, I was totally on vacation mode, right? And that's another thing I've been trying to do more and more is like, how, if you were on vacation right now, Andy, but you still had some things you wanted to do. I mean, there's, there is vacation mode where you're just play, play, play. But then like, you know, I want to create my work. So my work feels like vacation. Mm. Like, oh, I would pay money to do what I'm doing. I would pay somebody if I could do this podcast. (laughs) I would pay to be able to, you know, to run a membership. Yeah, it's how you want to um, spend your time. The desire to spend your time doing these wonderful things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's so good that I would pay somebody. Luckily, I don't have to get paid and I do get paid. But like, that's the level of where you want to be. It's like, oh, man, I would pay to do this. (laughs) And 
So I was uh, downtown Boulder and I was wanting to create uh, a magic moment, run into somebody, have a great conversation, uh, see something new, whatever. It's a weekend, lots of people around on the Pearl Street Mall. And I went over to a store called Hetty Bauer. Instead of Eddie Bauer, it's a vintage store. And my fr- I have a friend, Pinner, who runs the store and did 10 years of music festivals collecting all these vintage clothing. And upstairs in his store, he has like a little jam session where there's a couch and guitars and drums, a few drums, guitars, a keyboard. And so I sat down on the couch and grabbed a drum and just started banging out a nice little drum beat. Nice. Just putting out the vibe, right? Vacation mode, people shopping. It's a totally cool vibe. Yeah, Hetty Bauer. So anyway, I'm banging on the drum, putting out the good vibes. No expectations, but, you know, feeling like it would be, you know, like, wouldn't it be nice if somebody joined me? Wouldn't it be nice if somebody started jamming? And so sure enough, about 10, 15 minutes goes by. These two dudes come up and they're like, cool. Like they're checking out like the music section and they see me banging. And this one guy's a drummer. I didn't even get his name. He just sat down and just started banging out a beat. And he was good. And I was like, damn, he's good. And the other guy sits down in the chair and he's just kind of like, yeah, this is, it's a vibe. It's a vibe, you know? So we're all starting to vibe together. Uh, And then I started banging out another beat and then he compliments my drum beat. So now we've got two beats going and they're complimenting each other. Um, And we start singing, Ed Bauer, you know, started singing just, making some stuff up. People are coming in the store, they're shopping, they're checking it out. Like it's, it's, we're creating some really good vibes. And then the guy, the other guy grabs the guitar and starts playing. Um, and we start making up the song about Eddie Bauer, you know, you got the power. And then Pinner comes up and he starts playing the keyboards a little bit. And he did a little video of all of us. And it was just magic. It was so fun. being in the right place at the right time. Uh, you know, we each of us became the answer and we were all the answer together and we were creating something that that never existed before. That that moment, that sound, that chemistry, connection, it was just so magic. pure bliss. Yeah, yeah, so magic. I love the feeling of this collisions in time and space and, and how actually when you really think about all the moments and all of the people and all of the things in this world, like these these combinations that take place that are magic are irrepeatable, which is not a real word, but I made that up. It's irrepeatable. It's not repeatable. You know, this is a this is a um a, a magic vibrational like flower in the universe that is that is like just popping up. It's like a splash of a wave on a rock. Like when that spray will only happen right. once in that exact way. Yeah. And I love that. I, doesn't that bring a preciousness to the perception of the present moment? You know, like that every it moment does. matters. Yeah. You know, this is the timing of it. I, yeah, you know, that I sat down and, and 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 put out an offer. Like I'm I you know, somebody, you know, the potential for someone walking in the store and playing was it, it's it's a there, it's the potential. Right. And then, you know, there were a lot of people in the store just looking and smiling, but not picking up an instrument. But those two guys could play the drums and jam. Um and then the other guy who was playing the drum, he got up and he started playing the Beatles, Hey Jude, on the keyboards. And so now we were singing, we were doing some Beatles stuff and it was just pure magic. magic. And it was like, yes, hashtag more of this, please. Thank you so much for representing the sweetness in the universe. You know, we have a little thing in the game of nowism. It's called pause for the applause. And we use this as just a reward moment of like, yay, like yay, everything in general. If you catch yourself out before you fly into a negative momentum, that that moment where you catch yourself, yeah, like it's just like, yeah. And I can imagine that as you're jamming with these friends, you know, when you're you're looking at each other and you're you're actually creating magic, that there is this sort of agreement of an there's an applause, a standing ovation from the universe. Yeah, it is good, and though, and you know, we can have those moments every day. Mm. And for anybody listening, you know, you think, wow, well, I don't, I can't play the drums, or uh, you know, there's no stores like that where I live. But you can create a fun interaction when you're buying your groceries. You can create a fun interaction with somebody. When, you know, you're at the car wash or at the coffee shop, like that's where you want to be the answer. 
And rather than waiting for something to happen so you can respond, create the magic. Right. Like I wasn't waiting for somebody to say, come on in the store and jam. Right. Like I sat down and I just started banging on the drum. Right. And then these dudes came in and they started jamming and it just became a vibe, yeah. became magic. And so, so for you listening, you know, the answer is here. Yeah. Go, yes. you bring, so I'm challenging you today, right now, bring the magic to work, bring the magic to the grocery store, bring, bring the magic. magic, even letting somebody in, in traffic, mm -hmm. like just, that's a nice gesture. It's like, yeah, it doesn't have to be a musical jam session, but like, and then can you go to a drum circle? Can you get out? Uh, you know, it's summertime here in the U.S. And, you know, there's all kinds of evening things happening because it gets dark later. Like, get out there, stir up the magic, mm. be the answer, and put out that good vibe of wanting to create magic, joy, spontaneity. It's there for you, and the universe will deliver it in the most magical way. The most magical people will show up and join you. It's there. Mm. It's like the difference between being a thermometer and a thermostat. A thermometer is going to walk into the room and test the the temperature, and it's going to say, mm. "Yeah, this is the temperature." And it's just going to join it. It's just going to mirror exactly what's already happening. Right. But a thermostat is someone who walks in the room and brings the tone that they want to experience. They 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 start the ripple effect. They they ignite the fire uh, of the vibrational match. And so bring the joy. You don't get what you want. You get what you're being. You can't have what you're not generating initially. And so I, I feel like this um, responsibility is such a beautiful one. And it's so simple to carry this piece with you all the time, you know, to actually set the tone of the vibe that you wish to experience, knowing that it is your responsibility. Ultimately, the answer is you. Yeah, it is really empowering. And, uh, you know, tonight after this, because of our, our podcast here, I'm going to write more in my journal about me being the answer, me being the optimistic one, me being the playful mm -hmm. one, me being like, you get to be that role. Like, that's the incredible thing about time, space, reality. You can, you can be the grumpy person who's always tired and nothing's right. And you can also be the playful one who... Right brings the magic like so often i do that when i'm in the grocery store you know just mm. interact with them play something say something do something like so yeah it just makes such a difference and then that's when you know you're being the answer yeah you know i like the idea of um remembering the divine quest that you were sent from eternity into time to bring the answers. You were the one that we're waiting for, that you truly are the hero in the story, that that regardless of how majestically complex it all looks and how it cluttered and distracted that you can get, just remember that you are actually at a center of the universe and that the story that is the greatest story ever told is truly you. So playful out and love out loud and keep turning up and remember the, the opportunity, hence <laughs> responsibility really, to actually bring the magic because this is really the game plan. This is the fabric of, of why we, we signed up for the game in time and space. And so remembering that the answer is me, the answer is you, you know, write it down, put it somewhere where you can remember that right. actually because these concepts are fun and i know that our listeners right now are probably chilling in their cars driving somewhere fun or maybe you're on a walk or wherever you are it's really easy to remember and to agree with what andy and i are sharing here and to your energy is in the yes energy right now we're in an agreement of the goodness but what really matters is that when we walk away from these moments where it's easy to match the vibe that we become the thermostat, that we do set the tone. And so remind yourself, right. put the reminders on your fingers if you need to, so that you can actually recall the divine assignment in what looks like mundane moments so that you can actually make a magic. It makes me think of improv comedy yes. and how that was such a profound training ground for anybody who goes through improv, whether you become an improviser or not, but just to get the improv comedy training where you yes and 
other people's offer, or, you know, someone jumps on stage and they say, you know, I have a bag of oranges and you jump on say, stage and you, yes, yes, you do. And I love oranges. Yeah. I have a hundred dollars. I'll pay them for you. Right. Then they respond with, yes, you have a hundred dollars. Yeah. And like you create that Second. magic by yes, anding each other and creating something that's never existed before. Right. I've seen some videos recently on social media where, uh, a guy is in his car and he he's having fun with other people in their cars when they're sitting at a stoplight. Right. And he'll like roll down the window. They're sitting at a stoplight and go, hey, excuse me, excuse me. And the guy rolls down his window like he's in a Lamborghini and he's really good looking. And he goes, hey, you're a really good looking guy in a Lamborghini. Will you save some women for us, for the rest of us other people? And he gives these people a really wonderful compliment. Oh. And, you know, he videotapes them laughing yeah, I even seen, you know, the guy with the megaphone on a bike or, uh, and he's going down a sidewalk on a busy beach and he's complimenting, hey, I love that red polka dot trash. You look amazing, yeah, you so know. And then <laughs> yeah, it's it's a creative license, you know, like we're, we're so interesting as a culture. You know, we, we want to like, you know, don't, don't be too noisy, you know, like don't stand out too much. Like, make sure you blend in a little bit, like, you know, just just, you know, fade into the background basically but yet when we disrupt and when I say disrupt I really mean in a paradigm break, breaking way as opposed to like you know disrupting for no positive purpose so to speak but but to just shake things up is like giving yourself a creative license and one of the most beautiful things about when you evict yourself from your own comfort zone is that you actually are, um, are inviting others to do the same People admire people who are breaking out a little bit. It's sort of like it remind we remind each other. It's okay to yeah. be yourself, you know. I'm sure everyone can relate to this. You're at a party, and you, you a group of you end up in the kitchen, and you're you know there's six or seven or eight of you in the kitchen talking, and then I will be like, hey, let's play a game, and they're like, you know kind of feel a little nervous, and let's play zip zap zop. It's a super fun, high energy game. We're going to be laughing. We're going to create so much joy and spontaneity. And usually I can talk them into it. And, you know, we'll start playing zip, zap, zop. And suddenly the party went from fun, cool party to like over the top because we're now playing this simple improv game called zip, zap, zop. And the magic and the laughter that's created when we play that game, it is so good. It, it works every time. It's never fails. It's really and just everybody's laughing. It's really just um, inviting the the childlike part of our nature to just break out for a minute, isn't it? You know, everybody actually ultimately loves play at some level. Like we we want the invitation to just play. We want the invitation to laugh. We want the you know invitation to connect. I think that this is one of the – it's a sweet thing about our human nature, and it's easy to generate. It's easy to get followers. It really is. When Once you just set the tone and be that thermostat representing the answer being right here, right now, I am the answer. You are the answer. Let, let's just play. What a, what a beautiful sort of um, call from eternity about our childlike nature. Just remember who we really are. And I love how this gets us out of – trying to manifest the thing, heal the body, the manifest the lover, or the money or the job or the travel. And if you can just start taking the moments and finding the magic in the moments and bringing, being the thermostat, I love that metaphor. And then you're, then you're creating magic in the moments. You're looking for the opportunity. You're looking for an opening to compliment or appreciate or, you know, to skip or giggle or dance or crack a joke then you are you're creating the fun in the moment and then th then your vibe is just going to be consistently higher when you decide and this is really good it's it's bringing more clarity to being the answer when you decide to be the answer and be the answer of fun be the answer of complimenting appreciating be the answer of finding a thought that feels better you know in a sense you know I know Kat and I do this when we do coaching calls you know, we're helping our clients find the answer mm. and helping them point back to them. And like, I'll, I will invite my clients to, all right, you got 68 seconds. Tell me a better story about your situation. Right. You know, so now they have to fire and wire it and they've got to think and tell a better story about their situation. And even right now, listening to this, like 
can you take 68 seconds after this call, 68 seconds flex and tell a better story mm -hmm. about you are the answer and it's getting easier and you're having more fun. You're not taking it so seriously and trying so hard. Like that's the work. Yeah. This this playful, this this um, sort of invitation, but it, it was really like a rule to play, to to be more um, looking for the sweetness, looking for the fun. And what I love about this is when we, when you really build this as a culture into your life, something that Andy was pointing out before, you, you do start to have this default setting that is attracting fun opportunities. You're attracting these these moments because it's just how you roll. Like at first it feels like a bit of a big yeah. deal. You're sort of breaking out of a personality habits. You know, you're, you're pushing yourself a little bit to the edges of who you know yourself to be. But when you make mm -hmm. a personal culture out of looking for the goodness in life and looking for opportunities for fun or to love someone out loud or to compliment or to bring joy, then the, your average settings really do just go up a few notches. And then, and then this is so, well, the wonderful thing about this is that the law of attraction, the great law that we love to imagine bringing to us all of the things that are, that we are putting out there in this life, like it's responding to your average energy, yeah. not really all of the big right. visualizing moments that you have, which are beautiful too, by the way, like they are really important and they do set a new tone. But at the end of the day, the airtime that you're getting with your average five, where you averagely respond to life, how do you turn up? What do you notice? What are you looking for? Are you looking for what's not working? You know, or are you looking for the fun? The universe is responding to those yeah. moments. And so and so making it your number one priority to actually raise these this vibration, to raise this operating system, so that you have a culture, a personal law around looking for the goodness and setting the tone, being the thermostat, because ultimately you know that the answer is you. Right. Let's commit. I'm committed living in vacation mode, keeping the evidence journal going oh, yeah. and being the answer and bringing the fun and the magic to whatever it might be. And the easiest thing I have found is to sincerely compliment and appreciate mm. whoever you're interacting with. You know, even if it's someone giving you a cup of coffee at a coffee shop, yeah. you know, say thank you. Wow. What a great smile you have. Thank you for this cup of coffee. Yeah. Um, going to sitting down and, and seeing somebody sitting next to you and, and, you know, they're on their laptop, say, you know, you cracking the code for the next great invention, you know, just having that kind of playfulness, even if you're like, oh, but I'm an introvert, I can't do that. Um, you know, challenge yourself, get out of your comfort zone, be the answer, be the magic, and then let them, the manifestations are going to take care of themselves because you're having so much fun with moment to moment to moment, even entertaining yourself. Like it's always there. The magic is always there and it's all you. Yes. Wow. It's so true. And, you know, like the, this playful invitation, I feel like it's brings so much health and wholeness There's an alkalinity involved with, with just being in this, this sweet response to life. And so if you're not really sure if like this flavor of nowness is for you, I want to, I want to direct you to the idea right now that, that it's actually good for your body and your all of your systems, all of your organs, all of the systems and functions to actually feel flow, to feel ease, to feel grace, to feel play, to feel fun, to feel laughter. Laughter really is an outstanding medicine. And so this isn't just a good idea for your mind or for your manifestations, but rather this is good for your stress levels. You know, like there's, yeah. there's enough seriosity going on. All you have to do is turn on any device and you're going to get a hit by, you know, the latest worst case scenario weather report. It's actually just out there. It doesn't need more campaigning, you know, but, but fun and joy and good times does need your precious attention. May you volunteer your awareness to representing that because that is a good idea during this time in human history for all of your friends, all of your family, your community, your culture, and also your own body. Yeah, it's healthy yeah. to have that attitude and perspective and to embrace other people. You know, when you see somebody else doing something that could lead to play or creativity mm. or someone's like, oh, I got an answer. Oh, let me try this. And yes. like... 
Yeah, jump on that. Yeah, it's called um, the first follower. Do you remember that video, the YouTube video, oh, the first right. follower? It's so good. Yeah. Yeah, the guy at, for those that haven't seen it, or just a reminder if you did see it, I mean, this was, what, 10 years ago? Yeah. Uh, there's a music festival happening, and, you know, there's, it's, you know, you can see it's outdoors. There's a big grassy field. There's a slope. Yeah. And people are chilling this on the grass. One, yeah. Right. People are just chilling on the grass, you know, because like the band stand is way far away. Yeah. And people down there are dancing, but people are up close not dancing so much. And there's this one guy who just started going, just started dancing like there was no tomorrow. He's just fully committed. Yeah. And people are kind of looking at him like, who's that weirdo? Look at that guy kind of getting weird. Uh, but he just was so committed yes. and, and just so in it. And then he kind of, I think he kind of went to a couple other people to kind of engage them and they were kind of like not having it. And then he, uh, and then someone joined him. Just this one guy, he's called the first follower. Yeah. <laughs> yes. And, and he joined this crazy guy and then now there was two of them. Right. And then there was three, oh, and then there was four, and then five, and then six, back. and seven, and then the whole field of people is now just raving. Right. <laughs> and it was such a beautiful example, a real life example of it just takes one yes. person to commit. That first follower is key, yeah. and then the second, third, fourth, fifth, and, and it's it, it just easy from there. Yes. It's, it's like, it's similar to being the first person to start an applause in a theater, you know, like, right. like where if you're just like, yeah, no, this is a, this is a worthy moment, everybody. And, oh, like everybody will just join in. And it's like this, there's this crescendo that takes off. And I think this is a beautiful thing to remember that your life is a quest here in time and space, that these these precious moments are actually available. And to actually, if you can, if you can maintain and sustain through spiritual practice a high level of enthusiasm for life, then you will always be able to have a little bit of energy ready to bring magic to moments. That and you never know how impactful that can be to a collective or to a small group of people or to just another person. You know, this this sort of um, willingness right. to play and this creative license is such a is such a um, a beautiful responsibility to uphold. Yeah. So let's we'll start to wrap it up and let us all be the answer. Take responsibility for your life. Love yourself. Talk better to yourself. Look for those magic moments out there because they're there. Mm. And create, find that impulse. You'll get the impulse. Your higher self will be like, oh, say this. Go over there. Yes. Do this. Grab right. that. Sample sample that piece of meat or chocolate or whatever in the grocery store and tell the person this is delicious and go buy that thing and right. you know get together with some friends and create some magic. It's there. and. Yeah. And then the manifestations will take care of themselves because you're just so high vibing, looking for the magic and creating the magic. So good. And, you know, let the, let the vibe be the reward, you know, like, you know, I hate to break it to everybody, but you know, it feels good to feel good. Yes. Let us feel good. Let us not lose sight of the importance of feeling good and that we control the meaning of everything. So we can always find something to feel good about. And it feels good to feel good. So I'm going to stop feeling good now. I am the answer. Kat, you are the answer. Oh, such good news. Such good news. <laughs> All right. We're going to uh, say goodbye. Thank you guys for listening. Thumbs up. Subscribe. All the good things. We love you. Be the answer. Boom. Yeah, so that's the show. Thank you for joining us. Please subscribe, share it with a friend. We love you. Let's keep creating the good vibes, mastering our state of being, and making the best of everything. If you want to know more about the great Andy Dooley and the Manifestors Cafe, you can check the links below. If you would like to know more about the game of Nowism and building that toolbox for your consciousness, then check us out. We'll see you there. Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, bye, everybody.